Welcome to WXTV, your source for energy efficiency and home performance. As part of our health and safety series, today we'll be taking a look at fall protection. A job site like this, one in every three fatalities is due to falls. The OSHA rule is, if you could fall just six feet or more from a working surface, fall protection is required. We're in our training center now at our fall protection station, and we want to show you one of the most common ways that you can protect against falls when doing retrofit work like installing a vent or solar panels, or making minor repairs. And that's with a personal fall arrest system. In covering our preferences for personal fall arrest systems, we'll be talking about anchors, ropes, catches, and lanyards, and full body harnesses. It's important to keep in mind when assembling a fall protection system that it's not enough to just support your body weight. That's just part of the equation. A falling body can generate an extreme amount of force, and that force increases the further and faster the body falls. At the heart of any personal fall arrest system is the anchor. Now in order to withstand the forces generated in a fall, OSHA requires that your anchor be rated to 5,000 pounds. There are a lot of different types of anchors on the market. These two happen to be roof anchors or ridgeline anchors. And even there, there are different types within that group. It's an, always important to take a look at the directions that should be printed on the anchor itself so you know how to install it, where you can install it, and what types of tools and materials you'll need to do the job. So this one right here, we're gonna install with 16D nails. It says we're using uh, 20 side holes and we're gonna nail into the sheathing. Now, some of them, you can see we'll have slightly different nail patterns here. These have 10 holes along the edges that are labeled as the nail holes. And on the back side, we notice that those go into the sheathing. Whereas if we're using lag screws, we have uh, six per side here. So 12 total and those lags going directly into the trusses. Whereas this one actually just has the three lags going in directly into the truss member. And you can see by the nailing pattern, and when we read the directions, we'll note that the 16D nails in this one go directly into the trusses rather than just the sheathing, and so they're just using six on there. An additional piece of information you should note in the manufacturer's instructions is whether the roof anchor can be used and then reused. Some are meant to be discarded after used just one time. Let's go ahead and install this one. But before we do, there's one question that I receive more than any other, and that is, do you need fall protection when you're installing a roof anchor? And the answer according to OSHA is no. You don't need to use fall protection when you're either doing an inspection on a roof or while you're installing your personal fall arrest systems. Attached to your anchor, is your vertical lifeline or your, your rope. Now attachments should be equipped with a locking mechanism. You can see that I have to depress the back portion before this will open. That's to prevent it from accidentally opening while you're working on the roof somewhere else. And now the ropes. To be in compliance with OSHA, ropes have to be made out of man-made materials. They can't be natural fibers like hemp. So you're looking for nylon, spectra, things of that nature. They also have to meet all OSHA regulations and ANSI standards. Now, if you buy one at the store, it should be labeled as such. That means that at the very least, they have a max arrest force of 900 pounds. And like any piece of fall protection equipment, ropes should be inspected prior to use. 
They have a tendency to get abraded, frayed, and damaged by chemicals in the sun. That's not something you want to miss if this is what you're going to trust your life to. The length of the rope is of course important. The obvious point being that you don't want to fall off the eave of the roof and hit the ground before the rope catches you, or even fall so far that you build up enough momentum to create a force that could break your rope. So let's set aside this particular rope here, which has a commercially bought catch device on it. And let's talk about a fixed length of rope that you may tie off end to end. We have one here that's a climbing rope. And as you can see, we've got an appropriate knot on the end connected to a locking carabiner. When you are purchasing carabiners, you should make sure, first of all, that it's a locking carabiner. And second of all, that it has a sufficient strength rating you're looking for 22.2 kilonewtons or more. You can see that this one's rated for 23 in the direction of pull. This end is attached to your roof anchor and locked. Make sure that it's locked. It is not sufficient to just tie this rope off to your anchor directly. You do need to have a locking metal attachment device like a locking carabiner. The other end of the rope should be tied off at a point that gives you enough room to work, but not so much that you're going to take a big fall. So we'll go ahead and make a loop in this. And we'll use the same thing. We'll use a locking carabiner that attaches to our harness. One thing that makes managing your rope length easy is to use a commercially available rope catch like this one here. You can see it just moves up and down and when, when we want it at a length, simply applying pressure to that lever locks it off. Now a couple things to note on it, it does have an up and a down direction. It's never gonna catch going up. It's also never gonna catch going down unless you're putting weight on the lever. It'd be easy to want to hold it by the body here and move up and down, but unfortunately, if you do start to fall, it's not going to catch. Always move up and down the rope by holding on to that ring. That way, if you do have a tendency to fall, it catches. This rope catch comes with a shock absorbing lanyard on it, which takes the strain of a fall off the rope itself. A shock absorbing lanyard typically uses stitched together sections of webbing or an elastomeric section to take the strain off the rope itself during a fall. You've probably noted during the filming of this that using ropes can create a bit of a tripping hazard. One solution for that is to use a retractable system like this one here. So it works on an inertia reel just like the seat belts in your car. You can slowly pull out to the length you need, but the minute you build up any kind of momentum, it locks off snug but not too tight and you want it to be right at the center of the chest just just like you have it here the final piece that we're going to cover in personal fall arrest systems is the full body harness like the one shown here a full body harness includes webbing that comes over the shoulders wraps behind the back and encircles each leg including a sternum strap the harness should be sized individually for each person. And starting with the leg loops, they should be tight, but not restrictive. Straps should go all the way through the buckle here, go through the keeper, and then double back if you have that option, which just prevents it from coming out any further. Moving up, the sternum strap should be about even with the armpits there, right in the center of the chest. And it should be tight enough to prevent these shoulder straps from coming off the shoulders. The attachment point is another piece that can be adjusted for the individual. It should be in the center of the back between the shoulder blades. This one could probably stand to be just a touch higher. Inspection is key. Before you put this on, inspect it for abrasions, excessive wear, rips and tears. And you'll notice that these have impact indicators. Much like that shock absorbing lanyard that we showed you earlier, this is just stitched pieces of webbing here that in the event of an impact should rip free and indicate that this particular harness should be taken out of service. 
you can keep a record of your inspections right on the harness itself. And of course, if you forget any of what we've talked about here, there's always directions that'll tell you how to put it on and how to wear it properly.